Hello ladies and gentlemen. Today I will be showing you how I color correct my footages using Adobe Premiere Pro and using scopes. Today you will learn how to color correct skin tones. I <laughs> just messing with y'all man. What's good? What up people man? It's your boy E. You already know what it is, man. I'm just messing with y'all, man. But for real though, today I'm going to be showing y'all my techniques on how I color correct and how I use scopes um, to adjust my skin tones and, and to get good skin tones. If this is your first time checking out my channel, man, hey, I appreciate all the love, man. I definitely appreciate y'all, man. If y'all like this content, if y'all feel like y'all learned something, from this video man y'all don't, don't forget to comment like this video and also y'all subscribe to my channel so that way i can grow and uh, you know definitely put out some more content for y'all man i definitely once again i appreciate the love man hey let's just get right into it so y'all we're finally in premiere pro so i'm gonna just get straight to it and just show y'all how i color correct um so Obviously, I use scopes to color correct my footage. Now, I just want y'all to understand that color correcting is different from color grading. When we color grade, we're adding that creative LUT or whatever to give it kind of a creative look. But when we color correct, we're trying to fix exposure. Um, we're trying to fix your shadows, your highlights, even your white balance and and also skin tone so color correcting is very important y'all and like i'm gonna just be real it will help transform the look of your footage especially um with exposures and skin tone if y'all can learn how to color correct now i ain't no expert y'all not in the slightest um chance i'm still learning but this is what i've learned so far and like I said earlier, man, if this benefit y'all, good. If y'all learn something for dope. Um, but if y'all expert, just ignore everything that I've said, man. So when I color correct my footages, I use Lumetri scopes, um, uh, just a couple of scopes um, to help me get better exposure. Um, to help me get better contrast and better skin tones. Now, this ain't going to be an in-depth explanation into the scopes. Um, this is just going to be like a brief rundown of just the scopes that I use. Um, so first things first, if y'all can't see the scope, all you got to do is go to Windows and highlight Lumetri scopes. And that's going to pull up your scopes workspace. But... Yeah, so after you do that, and then when you come in into that workspace, you can just right click and it's going to bring up all the scopes that you got available for you. Now, for me personally, I use three scopes. I use my vector scope, which is that. And if I hide, highlight, um, unclick that, y'all can see it's gone. Let's go ahead and bring that back. And then I use my parade RGB, which is this. And then I use my waveform RGB. These are the scopes that I personally use to color correct my footages. So just a quick rundown on just the scopes and how they work. So with your um, parade RGB and your waveform, they kind of work in the same way to where like zeros would be the darkest part or like crush shadows and 100 would be clipped highlights um so for skin tone you want to stay between 30 and 70 obviously all this depend on the style of shot you want and just the style of shooting that you go for but usually that's what it is you don't want to um have your highlights clip and you also don't want your shadows super crushed and the same thing works with the parade RGB. Now, when it comes to the vector scope, this line right here, yeah, that is your flesh line. Um, most skin tones usually fall within that flesh line. 
And this right here is the level of saturation. Um, Y'all can see this shape. Look, I don't even know what shape that is. I feel so retarded. Can y'all comment in this section? I'm drawing a blank right now. I can't even think, but it's all good though. So right here though, the most important part about this whole thing is this right here is um, kind of like a safe level for people that do broadcast TV. This right here is 75% saturation. So that's usually like a good guideline. So from the middle of this right here to the top, that's kind of like your saturation level in terms of like skin tones and your work in general. When y'all color correcting skin tones for people that have a more pale complexion, you want the saturation between to be between 20 to 30 percent and then when y'all color correcting for darker skin tones like myself y'all want that to be between 25 percent and 45 percent and if y'all color correcting skin tones for like people with golden um skin tones like asians y'all want that to be um between 30 to 50 percent so that's just a quick rundown on those um just another brief head up um kind of just like on the side side note you can also use right here hso secondary to color correct your skin tone but that'll be another video for another day now if y'all want to see that video y'all let me know in the comment section but yeah enough for the description let's go in and just let's get started so the first thing that I do when I color correct is I come up here and I bump up my saturation. Now the reason why I do this to begin with is so that way I can get a more accurate representation of what my saturation is going to look like. Now always y'all can bring this down when you're done or if, if you like the saturation level you can always keep it at that. But for me, this is um, how I start. So the first time I'm going to show you all is uh, how to color correct for exposure and all that. And then the second part of this whole video would be how to fix skin tones. So once I'm done with my saturation, the next thing I do is I go to my curves. And if y'all don't know how curves work is this is your highlight area, your midtones and your shadows. It's just that simple. So we'll come down here and we'll just bring this down a little bit right there. So that's a little too. Okay. So I'm liking them. And you also pay attention as I'm making any adjustment. I'm also paying attention to this to make sure that I don't have my shadows super crushed and my highlights blown out. And then let's go ahead and do this right there. Okay. Boom. And then we'll bring this down slightly. Yeah, notice I'm just doing just a slight S S curve. Um, nothing too special. But with your S curve, you just, I mean, especially when you're color correcting, this ain't color grading, so you don't want to overdo it because when you add your LUT, it's going to look overdone. You just want slight adjustment. Um, I think with this, I'll just bring that down right there. So y'all just, y'all check out the difference between before we added curves to this. Now that's a good starting point um, for that. Then the next thing I do, I go to my basic correction. And then, so this is where I kind of just add just another layer to give it more um, depth in terms of color grading. So I like my stuff a little more contrasty. So I think, let me try 10, see what 10 looks like. So y'all just look at it before, after. So I kind of like that. Um, my highlights, I might just... Um, bring that down a little bit. Let's do minus four. And then my shadows, I want to bring up the shadows slightly. So I'm going to do eight on that. Now with this, just play it 
play with all your grades and stuff and when you with your color corrected to kind of get the exposure that fits your style without having blown out highlights or crushed shadows and then with my whites let's see let's put that um i kind of like the whites we'll put that at 10 and then should we and i want because y'all see right here i want those blacks to be a little more darker to have a richer darker tone so let's see boom y'all can see that difference that makes um so let me just show y'all with just a basic um correction tab so that's what that does so now we've added just a little bit of just depth to uh color correcting now in terms of white balance um i like the way this white balance um looks but if y'all if y'all have a shot that the white balance is a little off, I like to, to use this white balance selector. It's always a good starting point. You don't always have to use the recommendation. So I just click on this eyedropper and find something that I know is white. And I know the top of this hat is white. So y'all see it makes it a little more blue. I don't like that at all. So I'm just gonna um, kinda put that at minus, let's see, four. Okay, I like that a little bit better. And then I think we'll just do this in minus 1.5. Okay, so I like this better in terms of white balance for me um, in this particular setting. But it's always up to y'all. So once, um, let me show y'all just the difference. So that is from that and then with the curves. And y'all also notice I shot this on Canon C log. Um, y'all know when you want the most room for edit and stuff to shoot in a flat profile or in this case log profile. So yeah, that's pretty much that. So that's with the curves. And then that's with our basic correction. So then the next thing I like to do, y'all. My computer's been crashing a lot, so if y'all thinking, why is this idiot, man? That boy just be saving, saving. That's because I don't want to lose where I've been. So right here, this here, so what I do, I want to bring up this mid-tone slightly. So y'all see the difference that makes already? So by bringing that up, y'all take a look at this. Y'all see how this was more bunched together? But when we do that, we... Well, okay, yeah, that was more spread out, but when we increase it, we kind of bring it up a little more. And then with the highlights, I want to do the same thing to the highlights as well. Uh, yeah, I just see the difference that makes. Boom. So now we went from a darker shot to more lighter shot. And then what I do is I bring down my shadows. Boom. Right there. I am liking. So y'all look at that. So that's before, right? And then boom. So y'all see the depth in terms of the way our exposure is right now. So that's, let me show y'all this before. So we started with our curves. We started with basic correction. And then we added our color wheels. Boom. If if we want, we could also slightly increase that. Um, I like that. And then slightly increase that. Let me see how that's looking. And then we'll bump this down slightly. Boom. I like where I just like the way that's looking. So in terms of exposure, yeah, I know this is pretty just straightforward and pretty um, simple, but that's pretty much in terms of color correcting. Um, it's just simply just going through and just looking at your footage to make sure you get good exposure, good white balance, and just overall good feel. As y'all can see, my shadows aren't um, being crushed, and overall my highlights aren't um, clipping. This blue right here, that's why y'all see the blue channel is at the top, um, but I'm not too worried about that because the overall shot um, doesn't look too bad. Um, so... If we wanted, we could just probably bump that highlight just down a little bit. Boom. So I like that. So far, um, 
this shot, um, just for the sake of this example, I like the way the color correct in terms of exposure came out. So we'll go to the next shot. So y'all, yeah, this is the next shot um, of my wife. So the same principles, um, the same thing, I always start just the same way. And it's important for y'all to get like a flow, like a rhythm of how y'all like to work, um, where y'all like to start. I always, let's see, let's go ahead and bump my saturation like I always do. Um, my curves, let's go ahead and do that like so. I like that, and then let's go ahead and raise my highlights a little bit. Boom, right there. And then we always save. And then let's bring up the midtone slightly. And then let's reduce the shadows just a little bit. And then we might add just another, just right there. Boom. So y'all can see my S curve is. It's not, nothing too drastic, but it's always a good start for me with my curves. Let me just show you the before and the after. Y'all just always pay attention to this. So this is our before and the after. So then the next thing I always do, I go to my basic correction. And then let's see the white balance. Uh, find something that is close to white. I think that I like that. So we'll see. Mm -hmm. I like what it's done, so I think I might actually just do that at minus three, and then, and I think minus one point two, just slight um for now, and then let's go ahead. I like my shot a little more contrasty with a little more pop, so we'll go ahead and do that. The highlights, cause these are clipping that's. This spot right there is probably why this is the highest because Premiere Pro is analyzing that pixel as a clipped highlight. So I'm not too worried about that because it's not really affecting overall my shot. Um, so I think with my highlights, we'll just bump that down slightly, minus five. With my shadows, I want to bring up my shadows a little bit. So I think I'll do that at 12. And then with my whites, Let's see, with this one, I'm going to play around with this one. Okay, so I think I'm going to keep my whites at 15. And then, boom. I think with the shadows, I want to crush those. I mean, with, with my blacks, I want that at minus 2. Boom, I like this. So, once again, y'all see the difference between this. And this, let me go ahead and always save. So y'all, this just color correcting is very um, integral part. Y'all just always want to keep that in mind. So with our curves, first y'all see what that did. And then with our basic correction, we added a little more life to that. So next thing I want to go to my color wheels. The first thing I always do, I always bring up my midtones slightly, a little bit. A little bit of this. <laughs> Y'all think I should join America's Got Talent because I can see? <laughs> nope. Uh, that's how y'all feel. That's crazy. And then we'll bump up the highlights slightly. And then we'll bring down the shadows a little bit. Just a little bit right there. None too drastic. Okay. So y'all see the difference. Boom. From that to that. Y'all just see how we've... By adding different layers um, to our color correcting, we were able to take this completely log footage and we were able to turn it from with just a little bit of curves, with a, a little bit of basic correction. And by using our color wheels, we added life and depth to that shot. Um, I think we'll go ahead and bump this up a little bit and right there and just bring down the shadows very slightly. So y'all with this, it's just minor adjustments, man. Y'all never want to overdo anything. Y'all can see. So right now my shadows aren't really all the way, but it works. And y'all can see like it's close enough, but it's not super crushed to where um, you can still see the details. And I think the reason why it's kind of close to that is because if y'all see just the black here on the, on the backpacks, 
and stuff. That's probably why it's doing that. Um, so, but in terms of color correcting, I like the way those two shots have, um, and the way they came out. Obviously, this was just a quick example. If this was more of a professional work, I take my time a little bit more just to get it exactly the way I wanted to look. But y'all, y'all just see the difference in terms of the way color correcting, working in your exposure, and making sure that everything we do just looks a lot better and is um, cohesive. Y'all, y'all just take a look at that. Once again, let me show y'all the befores and after. So, boom, 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 right? And then we went boom. Boom, 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 boom. Wow, look at the difference that makes y'all. Like, look at the depth we've added to just the exposure. But yeah, y'all, that's pretty much it on um, color correcting for exposure. So the next thing I'm going to show y'all is how to fix skin tones. All right, so now that I want to fix my skin tones, so the what I do with shout out to Denver Riddle, I learned this technique um, from him. So what I want to do is usually if you can't get enough space, I want to zoom in a little bit. First of all, y'all look at that boy, man. I am ugly. Lord have mercy. Why I look like that? Jeez. Oh boy, that is crazy. That boy just hideous. So <laughs> I want to go to the effects control. On the opacity tab right there, I want to use my um, Bezier tool to just mask out a section of my face that has a bunch of my skin um, tones. Let's try not to grab that because we don't want it to think. Boom. Now, y'all can always do the whole face, but um, of course, not including the eyes, lips, or just around it. But for this, um, I think I'm just going to do my forehead and just use that as an example. So now that I've selected this, y'all, let's go back into our scopes. Y'all can see right now on this, so the flesh line right here, just like before. Um, so this flesh line kind of just shows us where our color is. And just like I told you earlier, y'all want to be between 30 to 70% in terms of like exposure depending on the shots depending on the overall look of your project um but here i can see on here that my skin tones are slightly just too red and the saturation since i'm a, a darker skin tone i want that to be between 25 and 45 percent so i just want that to be somewhere around this level um so what i do is we go to the curves and we go to the um, hue saturation curves. The first one I do is hue versus sat. We just use the eyedropper tool and we just click on a part of our skin. And then I just go ahead and extend this a little bit. And then I just want to bump up my saturation a little bit. Y'all can see the difference between before and then after. So let's go ahead and bump that slightly up a little bit. And then let's bring up the yellow slightly so y'all can see before after also pay attention right here so before after with that and then so then now since it looks like on my skin I have a slightly a lot of red or just it's leaning towards the reds a little bit I want that to be as even in in the flesh line as possible so let's go ahead and use the eyedropper tool once again. And then this. So with this, if you the more you expand this, the more colors you get or the more range. So I want to bring that slightly um to the yellow, but just not too much, just slightly. Okay, that might be too much. Boom. Y'all see the difference? So look, y'all look at that. That's before, after. Before, 
after just some slide. And then with this, I just want to bring that slightly up. Boom, y'all look at that. Before, after, before, after. So now we've made a huge improvement in terms of skin tone. Let me show y'all what that looks like without a mask on there. So y'all, so y'all look at the before. Boom, here my skin tones were slightly too red. But now by adding that, we've given it a more natural look. So now my skin tones look slightly just more natural. So y'all look at the before and the after. Before, after. Which if y'all want, we can always bring this down slightly more. Boom. So y'all just look at the difference in terms of my skin tone from having more red hues in my skin tone to now we have a little more life in that skin tone. So, and then I like the saturation level as well. But now that part is done. Let's go ahead and edit the other footage of my wife, which she has a more pale skin tone. We'll go ahead and work on my wife's skin tone. She has more of a pale complexion and we'll just do the same process as well. Let's go ahead and bump that, um, increase that 50% and then let's go ahead and highlight um, what we want or what we're looking for in the shot. Boom. And then once again, we'll go to our scopes. As y'all can see right there with the scopes, it's leaning a little bit towards the red side. Um, so first things, what we're going to do is increase that saturation. Um, so that way we have like the right amount of saturation um, for her particular skin tone. And I'm, so like I told you earlier, her skin, um, people with paler skin, there's the saturation on the skin should be between 20 and 30%. So let's see a before and after. So I'm liking the way that saturation is looking on her skin tone. And if y'all pay attention right here, we'll see the before, before, after. And then let's go ahead and work on just the hue. As y'all can see, we got this slightly a little bit on the red side. So we just want to slight, when you work in a skin tone, you don't want to overdo it, uh, which I don't really like the way Premiere Pro does there because it's so hard to get exactly where you need um, with these. Um, so, but we just want to be sly, subtle, just subtle movement. You got to be like a doctor with this thing, man, because Premiere Pro. I wish in Premiere they had a way to just have people Put in numbers here so that way if you want to just add a number, it's more accurate. Because I don't like the fact that you got to use these dials that don't necessarily get you the required result you're looking for. But anyways, let's see the before, the after. Y'all pay attention right here. So the before, see a little more to the red on her skin tone as well right there. After. We've given it just slightly more life and more just vibrance to her life and all around. So let's see. Let's let's go ahead and turn off this opacity mask. Let's just undo that. Um, let's see where we were. So that's before that you can see her skin tones um, were just more red. But by doing this. We've eliminated, taking out some of those reds. And then this is the point where I would go back and um, work on that saturation, which, let's see. So I think I might leave that at 100. Um, I like this at three. But yeah, y'all, overall, y'all just see what using scopes 
and just using that to fix your skin tones the difference that can make and then obviously if this um, y'all would take more time but this is just a rough overview of just how color correcting can help take your footage to the next level now if we if you don't like the saturation we can always even bring this down to 95 so the look is up to you but i like my stuff a little more saturated um so i'm gonna keep it at that um yeah that's pretty much it if y'all want me to make a video on how to use hsl secondary tab right here to work on your skin tones y'all let me know in the comment section below i'm gonna show you all a couple of before and afters and then what it looks like when i add my we're going to add a LUT that I made for myself. Man, man, I hope y'all enjoyed this video, man. I definitely appreciate y'all sticking to the end, man. Once again, man, if y'all feel like y'all learned something from this video, I definitely would appreciate y'all just liking it and just, you know, commenting and also subscribing to my channel. Also, if y'all want me to do um, a separate video showing how I use HSL secondary to color correct and to get better skin tones y'all just drop that comment um in the comment section but yeah y'all that's pretty much it man y'all stay safe y'all keep your head up and don't forget to be creative y'all peace